All right, this is the February 2022 meetup for WordPress Naperville meetup group. And today we're going to be talking about what's new in WordPress 5.9. And uh, I'm the organizer, Claire, and my co-organizer, Stacy, is going to be talking about um, 5.9 as well. Um, I am going to chat in the chat the um, sort of an intro page and where I'm getting my, it's sort of the outline of a presentation and um, it's a website where I'm going to be doing this demo stuff uh, as we talk. Um, like Stacy and I were briefly saying, WordPress 5.9 has a lot of new stuff. And if you're looking around the internet, you're going to see some videos and tutorials that tell you about how great it is and how different it is. Um, and OK, um, you might not see that on your site because there is a lot of new features that don't appear on every site. There are some new features that do. So first, um, let's talk about where we are in terms of the overall development of WordPress. Um, WordPress 5.9 represents phase two of WordPress's sort of overall Gutenberg roadmap. Um, phase one was the block editor, which was uh, introduced in late 2018. Most of us switched over to it in 2019. And that was, you know, a change from the classic editor where it was very blog like and it was sort of like a Microsoft Word interface into this kind of modular layout, more like a page builder. And now we're in phase two full site editing, where the entire site header, footer, sidebars, and everything is treated kind of like blocks or templates you can edit right in the interface. And if you've updated to WordPress 5.9, you may not see that. And that's because you need to have a particular kind of theme for this feature to be turned on. And let me show you first, I should share my screen when I go to show you what I'm talking about. Okay, so now you should be able to see um, my screen. Um, so this is what they're calling now a classic theme. This is just um, my own website, uh, Astra. And I can tell it's a classic theme because when I go to appearance here, I see themes, customized widgets, menus. These, um, these are old features of WordPress. We've all seen these for, for years and years, going back like 10 years, websites have had these. And they're still there in WordPress 5.9 if you have one of what they're calling the classic themes now. Now, here is a website that has- Hey, Claire. Um, yeah? Can you um, like double click on the top browser bar so it extends the whole- Sure. Just for people who have Thank bad you. website. Thank you. Uh, is that better? Great. Yeah, I can never see on Zoom either. So uh, yeah, please sing out if you can't hear me or see something I'm talking about. I sometimes lose track of what window is where. All right. So this is a one of the WordPress, um, they're calling it block themes. They're also calling them full site editing themes. And you can see that under appearance here, we have two things, themes and editor. Menus is gone. Customizer is gone. All the things, the widgets are gone. The things that we were used to um, building our site out of for years and years have disappeared. Um, in the new block themes. Um, WordPress has always been pretty good at being backwards compatible so that a site that was built, I just recently got a client with a site built in 2014 and it still works perfectly because they built it right in 2014. Um, all the old stuff is still gonna continue to work the way it did work. But if you're building a new site or if someone comes to you with a site that's been built very recently, um, you might see something like this and you might need to know how to deal with it. So tonight I'm going to be talking about new features in WordPress that are in classic regular themes and sites. And Stacy's gonna be talking about some of the cool new stuff in WordPress 5.9 that you see in the new full site editing or block themes. Um, caveat, if you don't know me, I'm not a designer. Things I do work, but don't look pretty. So when I show something, it's very utilitarian. And if you have any kind of design skill or CSS knowledge, you'll be able to make it look prettier than I do. So that's why my demo is very basic. Um, where am I in my things? So like I said, uh, WordPress 5.9 has a lot of cool things, supposedly. And some of them are very hard to learn how to use. Um, one of the... Sally. One of the cool new things that was particularly hard to learn about was is the navigation block. This is the new way to build menus. Um, so I'm going to start editing my page. And um, has everybody seen the chat window with the link to the page that I'm talking about? So you can follow along in your own browser. It's in the 
chat window. It's just um, my website and it's what's new in WordPress 5.9 is the link. So while I'm editing, you can also look uh, and see what the page looks like in your own browser. So we still have in a classic theme, we still have a way to add menus over here and under appearance menus in the admin panel. So if I go over to, that's the usual warning, we always ignore that. If I go over to menus, um, I have, I can see a list of the two menus that I created in this old school menu interface that we we're all familiar with and that has been around for years and years. Um, I have my main menu for my actual website and then this WP 5.9 menu that um, just has a few lists of a uh, few fake custom links in. I'm going to go back to my page with my navigation demo on and show you what the new navigation block looks like. Um, the navigation block lets you put a menu anywhere you want on the site. And that includes if you're using one of the new full site editing themes, the header and the footer. The ones I'm showing are just in the body of a page. And you'll see that it has some features that you really don't want to use in the body of a page. You want to use, um, but we'll go through them. So a classic menu is, let me first uh, just add a navigation block. And this is sort of typical that it's kind of hard to figure out where you are and want to add. Insert after, we're gonna add a block and it's gonna be a navigation block. Right away, I have a menu choice, select menu, add all pages, start empty. I'm gonna select menu. My classic menus are all the menus that I've created on this site. Now, remember when I looked at the, nav at the menu page under appearance, there are only two menus, WP 5.9 and the one that's called main, uh, here they are, main menu and WP 5.9 are my classic menus. So it's calling classic menus are the menus that I created in the old school way in the old menu interface. So I could add one of those to my site. And you can see that it sort of pops up this tiny little, the spacing is a little bad. It pops up this uh, little block with the links from my old menu. And it gives me the choice of, do I want to display them vertically? Do I want to display them horizontally? Do I want to put them in the middle, left, right alignment? Um, some basic options, some options for background color and so forth. Um, so that's, if you have, if you're more comfortable using the old school menu, that's the way you can add uh, one of those old school menus through your navigation block. Now there's a lot of other menus you saw when I was creating this that also appear in the navigation block. Let me get rid of that guy and go down a little bit. Um, one of the options navigation was add all pages. And this automatically generates a menu that contains all the pages on your site. Um, there's a setting sort of like this in WordPress that I think was called automatically. It was a checkbox on the menu page that was automatically add top level pages to your site. Um, there's probably a use case for that if you have um, a very small site with a very structured um, content hierarchy. And when you add a new landing page, you know that you want it to be in the navigation. Maybe if you're setting up for a site for a client and they have a very controlled set of content, this is appropriate. Most of the sites I work on, you don't just want to decide that you're going to add every page to the menu because there is a, you know, the menu needs to be a little more controlled. Um, but it's a handy feature. Another option that you have is to add one of these menus that has been created in the new menu interface. And that's what the bulk of these are, the ones that aren't called classic menus. And I can pick one that I have already created and add it. And you see that its links just show up. The interface is a little confusing because you have to go, um, each link just looks like regular text. So you can't really tell um, you can't really tell what you're doing. This is where the list view comes in handy as you're navigating around your page. The list view is this three diagonal links icon here. And this um, has been enhanced recently. It's been around for um, a while in WordPress, but it's been enhanced recently. And now it's a, probably the easiest way to navigate around your content when you have a complex page and figure out what exactly you're selecting. So you can see that under navigation, it actually has each individual menu link listed as its own block now, and I can drag them around and reorder them. 
and I can also delete them from this. Uh, I don't think I want to delete them from this. I can delete them from this area too. And when I delete, when I have a menu added to a page like this, and I delete and I delete or change it either in the body of the page or in the list view over here, that uh, change applies to every version of that menu that you've impl implemented throughout the site. It does function in that way, like the old school menu does. Um, if I, uh, uh, somebody just sing out if you have any questions and let me know, or you can type your questions into the chat and um, we can take a break for them every once in a while. Does anybody have any questions right now so far? Um, this, uh, I think this new menu, I don't know, it's pretty cool. It's really a pain to figure out when you first start clicking around in it. So wait for a day when you've got a lot of patience and you're willing to spend some time beating your head against a wall because it's, it's kind of a doozy, um, but it has some cool stuff. So the main thing you're gonna wanna do with a menu is, if you're like me at least, is just make a new menu. You're gonna be looking around your site and thinking, I could sure use a sub navigation between this landing page and all its child pages, or this page needs some new internal links because it's got so many headers and people need to be able to skip around. So the start from new is, um, the sort of the classic or start empty, they call it here. And this is where the interface, I think, really breaks down. See, I, I clicked start empty and you'd see what happened. It just disappeared. And I have this plus over here. I know because I've spent four hours trying to figure out how to do this, that when I see this wide horizontal bar with a plus over here, it's ready for me to add a menu link. There's really no other visual indication that your menu has been created and is empty and is waiting for you. So um, hopefully that sort of thing will be improved in the future. For now, it's you just kind of have to know, you know, you get a feel for it. Um, the interface to add a link is very similar to the interface to add a link when you click on text and content and highlight it to add a link. So um, if you search, you will start seeing, um, you can search and get an internal page to link to. Um, when I click inside, again, this just horizontal bar with no other visual clues, I have this plus over here to add the next link. And if I start typing a URL, um, it's not gonna actually do anything that I can, you know, it says URL, it recognizes that I'm typing in a URL. Um, I find this particularly irritating. It has created a link to Google. It did not give me any opportunity to edit the link text at all. I have the um, I have the link, the actual menu item highlighted um, in my navigation block right now. Over here in the inspector panel, there's some link settings, but it's description, link title, and link rel. It's not the actual link text. To edit that, I have to do this, uh, I have to go in here and actually like edit the text. Again, no visual clues. And it also deleted my yeah, this is this is pretty fiddly. So I've now I've got my text that says Google. So through a combination of clicking, highlighting, and editing, you can add an off-site link with a URL. It's um, I find that pretty clumsy, and I don't like it as much as I did the other older menu interface. It's a little harder for me to work with. Um, I could see there being advantages to this though in the way that you have, this is something that you can embed anywhere in the site. You have different options for layout for the, for me. I don't have to worry about, you know, I can fiddle around with design a little without uh, having to know too much about how to configure things. And I can, um, you know, if I wanted to, for some reason, have a block that looked like that right in the middle of my page, I could. So it works, but again, it's kind of, you gotta click around and get used to it. Um, one of the cool things that you can do in menus now is if you're doing a header on a site, you're designing a header on a site, you don't have to hunt down 50 different plugins and figure out how to make a widget work if you wanna add social icons and a search bar. Those are now items right in the menu. So I've got my, let me scroll down here to see. So I've got my navigation bar selected over here and the list view is, is telling me that the children here are social icon blocks. So let me show you how one of those work. When I click inside this horizontal bar, which is my navigation uh, block, 
the, I have options to add custom link, social icons. You know, maybe that's the way I should be adding th links to Google. Maybe I haven't actually tried that. Anyway, social icon block that pop down over here, click plus to add. And um, they have, I think they have pretty much everything you could want. Behance, Twitter, uh, what's the one with all the images that has cakes and things on it? Pinterest. My Twitter is. So those are added um, just like they are. And I think the current social media block um, but you can now add them to a menu, which you would then presumably in play, place in a header or somewhere else on your site. This site icon, this one tricked me today, site logo it's called. Um, you can add site logo. This is funny because it's like a booby trap. So you can add site logo. I thought it was. <laughs> you can add site logo to your, to your menu. When you add site logo, the image that you add to this random menu that you've just created on this random page in your site takes over your site. It's now your site logo. Like I, my theme is in no way connected to whatever I'm doing here, but WordPress like knew my theme setting for my logo, hunted it down and swapped out my actual, you know, branding logo on my website with the stupid image that I had uploaded and update, it updates your fab icon and anything. So be aware that this site logo block that appears in a navigation block is how you control your site logo globally it is not to add a cute little logo to a menu just and just have it show up in one place it's your actual site logo setting so this is my actual logo now um, and it gives you some uh options over here link image to home because they're assuming that you've done this in a menu in your header and that you know what you're doing so there's uh you can make it bigger you can make it smaller different uh I suppose it actually says right here, the instructions, the changes apply everywhere. But um, I wasn't expecting it to hack my site and replace my logo. You can also add a search in, in your menu bar, uh, in your navigation block rather. Again, that's just, that's not showing up right. I hate when it does that. But um, it's one of the options down here in the child blocks available to the navigation block. And there's a few options for search, like I think color um, and button text, but I think that's gonna, um, I think those are gonna be enhanced more in the future. Um, any questions about those particular child blocks? I'm gonna show a, another cool feature of menus that has resolved a technical issue that we had in sites recently as last month. Have you ever been on a website and there's a drop down menu like this. Oh, I'm going to need to show you on the front end. Let me just uh, get there. So you're on a website that has drop down menus. And the way the drop down menu is laid out, you have to like, as soon as you take your mouse or your cursor off the parent link, the child menu disappears. So you have to do this sort of threading your way carefully around the links on a site. Um, this isn't a particularly good example because this one's easy, but if you have a very large sub menu or it's popping out to the side, sometimes you have to make sure your uh, your mouse very carefully uh, traverses a path so that this stays active until you can click on a, on the child link. There's this new open on click set where you can see it's not opening on mouse over. Um, it's waiting until I actually click on it. That way, it's got a little toggle to open and close it. So I, I don't have to worry about, you know, very carefully steering my cursor. I can just click once, it's toggled open, and then I'm good to click one of these. Um, any questions about navigation blocks? Yeah, Stacy. I, I have a question. I haven't tested this. Um, normally, uh, when I style a site, I look for the classes that a navigation bar would come with normally yes. to style the active or like parent-child relationship. Yes, and that actually reminds me of the other thing that I needed to talk about. So the classes are down in the advanced section. If you click on navig, if you have, or rather if you select your navigation block, which is now just easier to do in the list view. I basically have gotten used to just having my list view open. Um, if you select your navigation, it's down under advanced and you have your additional CSS classes here. 
Uh, Does it add active? Like is active is current page like the old navigation question. would if you were on that page? Like if this is a anchor link menu, we'll say, or like a little mini menu and you have like four pages for an event or something and you're on the registration page, but you want to keep that menu consistent between all four of those mini event pages. I don't know if it could, because how would it know? Let me see, where's my... Well, does it, do, uh, we'll, we'll take a look when I do the full site editing to see yeah. if it knows, because it's the same block, it's just... All right, so, so I have this Claire's demo pages menu and it links to a page and basically on this page, would it know that it is now... Right click. Right click yeah. and inspect. Let's see what the classes are. Mm. Current menu. I don't well, it it knows it's current. Yeah. Look at okay, that. so right yeah. there. So that's cool. Item. So it has that. So if already page um, current. Right. You can't really tell because I don't have a correct styles on my site. Yeah. But so if you create, so what we're saying is if you create um a menu out of pages on your site that menu that you created can automatically tell when it's on one of those pages in itself and it will be able to you'll be able to style it or your theme would even apply the styles automatically so i'm on my gallery and images updates page here and i included um, a menu that contains that page it if i had correct styling in my theme it would have highlighted that um, let me also show you so when i go to add a navigation menu uh, we saw that there were so many menus to choose from and oh go away one of the nice things in list view is you can now just do your insert after right here which is handy because i it's really hard to tell where you're clicking when you're dealing with navigation blocks so um you see a lot of these menus have names just like navigation to navigation through navigation for some of them have real names when you create a menu you they've hidden where you name it oh, let me show you here so this menu the, the place you name your menu is in the advanced section of the navigation blocks um detailed area in the in the right hand panel so it's actually hidden so you would need to know you need to know when you're creating a menu to go there and name your menu there and then when you go to when in the select menu area it's going to show up with its name there um all these others are just names that have been automatically generated by wordpress because i keep forgetting to name my menus um which is i think another disadvantage over this new style rather than the old style because in the old style the first thing you did was name your menu and then you you know you might get confused about which, which menu was which but it wasn't navigation five navigation six navigation seven so it takes a little getting used to but has some cool new features that's kind of WordPress in a nutshell, I guess. Um, so I had a big list of cool new things that I was going to show, and half of them didn't work. So um, one of the things I did get to work was some of the new features in WordPress galleries. I'm going to go over this really briefly because um, I use WordPress galleries. Most people have their own favorite gallery plugin. So WordPress is kind of gradually catching up to everybody's favorite gallery plugins in the terms in terms of the um, options it offers. Um, basically, the gallery updates in WordPress 5.9 treat each rather than having the gallery as a whole unit that you style everything the same. They treat each image individually, so you can now add duotone features individually to your black and white images or whatever. Um, you can apply links each image can be individually linked to a link of your choosing that you can enter right here in the usual link interface before you had to choose whether it was um, you had to do some workarounds or have a plugin if you wanted your, your images in a gallery to link to anywhere in particular um, they still there's still the option to link them to the attachment page in the media i believe that's in the gallery setting now Again, let me pop open my list view. There we go. So the options to link to attachment paid me media file or none are set at the gallery level, and you can go in and override that now on the individual image. Um, there's a masonry setting for the gallery. You can control how much um, 
space is in between the images. So we have masonry gallery. You can enable it or disable it. Uh, you can make it spaced out or not. Um, I could not figure out how to reorder the items in a gallery. You can't drag and drag and drop them in, in media library. Maybe it works for other people, but it wasn't working for me. So um, if you see a tutorial online with all the cool new things you can do in gallery, um, just be aware that maybe not all of them work. Maybe some of them work in the full site editing themes and not in this in your particular theme on your site. I got about three of the many cool things to work. I don't have masonry as an option on the full site editing on the block oh. theme. Block gallery block weird. This this update is maybe a little half baked. Yeah, um, that's weird because you would have think they'd had. I assumed that what I was missing in. Um, I saw a tutorial where they had this really cool effect where the edges of the individual gallery images were um, rounded so that the whole gallery sort of fit into this, this round oblong shape and it looked really neat. And I could not figure out, like they had a screenshot of the settings. I could not figure out how to find those settings. Um, I think a lot of this seems to be kind of situational still. Like maybe it's interactions with your theme. Maybe it's, I can't think of what it would be, but yeah. Um, some things are working and some things aren't. Oh, this one. So my next example is absolutely terrible. I was all excited about the new updates to featured images because it solved a problem for a client that I was having like this week. Um, I had a situation where I needed to be able to tell a client um, to define a particular featured image size and then the client wouldn't have to worry about resizing or anything. And so I was pretty excited to see, oh, that's interesting. It didn't update my menu when I changed the URL on the page. That is another, that is another demerit. So there's this new feature. Featured images now have dimensions associated with their attributes, basically. Um, before they didn't, before the featured image size was defined by the theme, I believe, and you could either, you could, you didn't really have much control as a developer over what size the featured image was. So there's a tutorial about, about how this is a, a query loop block. If you're doing something like a query loop and you use the featured image block inside that, you can now set the dimensions of your featured image. And you're like, oh, cool, that sounds really great. I'm going to make my featured image enormous and it's going to be beautiful. And then I went to preview this after carefully configuring it. And this is like the worst ever. Um, so I'm not a great designer or CSS person, but I fiddled with the settings on this block, which has been around for quite some time. Um, I fiddled on it for probably 45 minutes and couldn't get it to display any better than this. So unfortunately, some of the featured image updates uh, look like they're not, they haven't been fully integrated with the block editor yet, maybe. So that's another thing to, to um, be aware of when you're out there trying out the new cool things in WordPress 5.9. Okay, and I want to briefly review. You've probably seen some of this. Ugh, it's maddening. When I updated my pages, do you know how in the old um, WordPress, if you had a link in a menu, if you had a page link to in a menu and you moved that page or you changed the title of that page, it would update in the menu all the way around your site and you wouldn't have to think about it. And that doesn't seem to be happening with these sort of created on the fly menus. Um, which is too bad because that's a really great feature in, in WordPress. So hopefully the WordPress 5.9.1 is going to be out pretty soon and fix some of these. Okay, list view updates. Okay, so um, you've seen a little of this as I've been clicking around. This is actually, I think, really nice because I um, part of my job is creating pages for people out of the cool blocks that a designer has made or a front-end developer has made and out of the content that they've given me. And I um, end up using the list view a lot because it's an easy way, when, especially when you have a long page 
and you might have some embedded elements like the way this heading is inside a group, um, especially with columns. Sometimes it's hard to tell exactly where you're clicking. When you have complex layouts, the list view is really handy at telling you um, where you are on the page and what element you're looking at. And so the new things in the list view are this sort of way it collapses now, which is neat. So you can collapse all your top level elements down. So if you just had a bunch of columns or sections one after each other on the page, you could just see each of those instead of looking at the details. You can drag and drop over here. So I'm in, uh, let me see where I am. I'm here. It's an empty paragraph. I can drag and drop my new paragraph all the way down into a different group. Um, you can also, if you have something like a section or a column, you can drag things into a column, which was pretty hard to do before. You had to usually like copy and paste like inside a column or inside your box or container. And now you can actually just drag things. You can just drag things into their or, or even out of their um, parent elements just by looking at where the indentation is. Uh, like I can take my header and put it out here. And now my header isn't in that group anymore. I'm gonna put that, that works for empty columns. If you add a columns block, can Let's you drag? See. I couldn't earlier today. That's one of the first things I tested. I couldn't do it with section. Actually, I had to add a, um, a blank paragraph in a section. So let's get columns. So we've got column one, column two. Sorry, a paragraph there. Uh, I've got a paragraph. I'm going to put it. No. <laughs> oh, okay. If I do that, which is kind of unintuitive. So if I drag that paragraph from the sidebar over into the middle. You just can't do it in list view. Yeah, I didn't try that. You can't drag it in well, list that's view. That's better than what you used to yeah, have to do. Yeah, at least there's a way to do it. Um, you can also, I think, copy over here too. So copy. Let's see if I can paste over in here. No, Oops, but I, well, I can no. probably paste in here. No, I've got to add. I've got to add my blank thing first. Probably add a blank paragraph and then paste. Yeah. yeah. So it's a okay. little better. Um, it's pretty slick. One thing I really like is now when you create a new heading. Um, I'm gonna create my new heading. This is a great way to organize content, and it's also great for accessibility. Uh, it automatically created the the HTML anchor based on the text that I typed in. And um, that's great because I use this all the time for internal navigations. Um, if you don't know what an HTML anchor is, let me just show I've been using this Kinsta. Uh, so you've got a long, long page and there are many, many headers on it and it's pretty hard to figure out where you are and maybe you need to send a, um, a link to someone and tell them where to look on the page. On Kinsta, they do this nice thing where um, they've got a, they tell you where the link is. Anytime you see this hashtag in a URL, that's a link to that specific part of the page, and that's how you create internal links. So what WordPress is doing here, where's my edit, is it's automatically creating the HTML anchor for you. So if I want to go up here to my internal links menu and add another one, oh boy, I want to add. I wish they had a block for internal links. They don't. So unfortunately, it's a little maddening because it would be nice if it automatically detected that those headers exist and they don't. So what I need to do, unfortunately, is actually type in the D is for dog. And then it recognizes that it's an internal link and creates it. And then I need to do the thing where I go back and I edit the link text because it automatically made it the actual URL. So they're about halfway to a really cool thing here, I think. I think it'd be great if you could automatically generate internal links from all the headers on a page. Was there a block that used to do that? I think there, like there's a table of contents block. Yeah, there yeah, are. there's a table of contents block. Uh, you could also add some blocks except that HTML anchor input in the advanced tab, like spacer for some reason. I just find that, 
I don't know if group does. I feel like group should group and row because the outer level blocks, if they're all collapsed and just says like row, 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 that's not so helpful for your own navigation. It would be really um, nice. Yeah. Like if yeah. the paragraph actually had like th the first words of the paragraph, so you could see what you're rearranging rather than just anonymous paragraph. Yeah. But it's these improvements are are nice. And I, I'm looking forward to seeing them do even more mm. of this. I think that's it for my uh, survey of things that will be on every WordPress 5.9 site. Um, does anybody have any questions uh, about any of this? Because next up is Stacy, who is going to be taking a deep dive into some of the actual um, like revolutionary new functionality in 5.9 that you'll see if you've got a block or full site editing theme. All right, I'm Stacy, I'm going to make you co-host or make make host. And I'm going to stop sharing my own screen. Okay, you should be able to share now. Super, yes. I'm going to share this exact desktop so y'all will see yourselves for a second. And then I'll move you here. All right. Oh boy, this looks different right before the meeting started. So I don't know where I got these white backgrounds from, um, but we will we'll play some games together at the end and we'll do, do some trivia to see if we can figure out how to fix some things. All right, Claire did an excellent intro to what a, what there's like those four types of themes right now and it's like block theme and then universal theme and is there like a classic theme and what was the other one well basically hybrid universal and hybrid are sort of combinations of are they classic or are they like do you also see your old appearance menu or do you just yeah. see the new site editor so there's 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 two things now and then there's like themes that have combinations of those two things and that will probably be the majority for at least a, a few years i imagine like i I don't know if I would recommend anyone like converting their site to a block theme right away. Um, that seems more like something you might do if you're going to do a redesign or whatnot. But um, it's it's a different experience. Uh, I know I've complained about the WordPress menu editing system for years, and now we have a uh, a system in which you can see the menu on the page. And I'm still going to complain for a little bit. Um, but I think, I think this path will be a much better one, um, as we move forward and this is still super early. So I know that a lot of these kinks will, will work themselves out. Uh, when you log in, you still see that same 5.9, like Claire showed earlier. Um, and then the appearance menu only has the two options. One is to install or activate a theme. The other one is to go to the editor. I don't know why, and I don't know if there's any way to, to change this, but um, you go to the home page template by default, I believe. Um, and that makes sense if you know what you want to do is edit things or preview things on the home page. But one thing I miss is the customizer let you navigate throughout the site and look at what it looks like, what changes look like on other pages. I don't know if I can do that here or if I can only see changes if I'm on a post template. Um, I'll show you what I mean in a little bit. Let's go over some of the full site editing global settings. Uh, instead of that list view that we lived in for all content related things, we're going to go over here on the right hand side. There's an icon. It looks like a little contrast icon. Uh, we'll click that. And right now it's sort of a basic set of options um, that you may have in your customizer from your old site. Um, these are more global uh, settings that you can uh, choose to apply to the site or at least build palettes. You have a theme with certain color palettes, so your brand palette that you might want to apply. Um, so right now we have three options. Let's go explore and typography. We have text and links. Let's go in deeper. So in the text, uh, you see uh, your font family, which is only, it, this is determined by the theme itself. 
So your theme actually has to load the typeface, the font file that you would see in this drop down here. System font is just whatever your computer would run if no font was selected. Um, it is the like fallback of any font space. Um, and then this theme, the 2022 theme, loads Source Serif Pro. And I can show you later on how they do that. So those are my two options here, really. Um, so if I change it to Source Serif Pro, uh, you can see the menu already updating from a sans serif here to the serif. That's nice. So we're going to keep here. You can set a global type size that will apply. Um, so if you just in general want everything slightly bigger or smaller, you can mess with the setting there. These are kind of like your body styles that will kind of cascade down depending on what settings you have for other specific blocks. Uh, 1.6 line heights, sort of just a general, this is how much space between the lines of text. And for appearance, you have different, uh, mostly font weights, but also font styles. Uh, you might see the italic version of a typeface if it's one that's loaded. I believe the Source Serif Pro is a variable typeface, um, which means it has like lots of different options and it only loads one font file, which is great for performance. So those are our high level type text features. Now there's also a links option here, which is if you want your links to have a different typeface, different font family, a different size, which then gets weird because this is a link and this is a link. Uh, I find the size on links is kind of a, a my mental model can't make that work yet. Um, I guess if there's some overrides in place, maybe that makes sense or maybe you always want your links bold, that sort of makes more sense to me. I can see why you would maybe want that to be a setting. But for me right now, I think I'm going to avoid styling the type of links uh, at a high level and let it inherit from whatever the styles, the, the theme or the, the body is telling it to. Colors is where it gets pretty interesting. Um, you can start by creating a palette on top, it will be the theme colors. So these are the colors that whatever theme you're using, or if you made your own, these are defined in that theme file. And I'll show you where those are defined by default. However, um, you can't you can't add new theme colors. That has to be done in the theme. But you can edit these options here. So if I didn't want this green, I can go to edit this color and make it, we'll say like a, a lime green. Okay, so there's my new, what, it, what was it called? I didn't even look, primary color, which might be actually problematic. I'm gonna make it a little darker. Stacey, do you know if people who aren't administrators, can, can anybody edit one of these theme colors? No clue. <laughs> um, I hope there's, there's likely some ways to lock it down. Um, I'm always the administrator. I'm sorry, I didn't do that kind of research. Um, yeah, you probably wouldn't necessarily want everyone to edit the, the overall global look of the site. So I'm sure there's there's probably some role, primary role of, of you know, assigning what can be done here. Uh, we will write note that down to look up which yeah. which permissions you have. Um, there's also a bunch of gradients. So the theme gradients are assigned at the beginning. You can unregister if you're using a theme that you um, maybe created a child theme from. We'll, we'll talk about that in a bit. Uh, you can unregister these colors as well. So you don't. I know I said you can't remove them. You would have to do that at the theme level. So there's ways to remove these options completely. So no one touches any of them. Default, again, same like, like with theme, you can't remove them. You can't add them. You can only edit them unless you're working in the PHP files within the theme. It's the theme files itself. This is getting confusing. A lot of these words are very generic. Um, but you can add custom colors. So let's say you want to add like this nice tealish color. We're going to call this teal. We're going to call it custom. 
Now I had custom colors earlier. I don't know where they are. Uh, that's kind of concerning. I had a plum and I may have had a purple color, but now I have a custom teal color. Super. Now I'm gonna save that uh, in this new block theme world. Um, well, this is also familiar if you had like reusable blocks, I think, or um, I don't know if block patterns did that. I think it's just reusable blocks where if you change something in one of those reusable blocks and something on the page, it gives you check boxes of what you actually want to save globally. So that's just saying it's going to save this um, style and apply it elsewhere. Yeah. Okay, still has my custom color. All right, and now I can go into any of these other options and assign a, co a color from my palettes. So I'm going to keep this uh, white background in general over the whole site. If I change it to a dark, uh, it doesn't do anything there, but that, oh yeah, there it is. I just scroll down. So there's what a dark background would look like, et cetera. I can change that and that applies globally. And then I could also change text if I didn't overwrite the text on some of these, perhaps. I think my menu links are really light now. Now they're dark. Okay. It's not a really good example since these seem to have their own style somewhere. Uh, that's one fun thing about this is sometimes you don't know where a style is coming from. And then this link color, again, I think it changed this. Yeah, it changed this link, but this is a link that didn't get changed um, so that there's some override on that. Uh, I wish there was an easier way, or maybe there is, and I just don't know what it is um, to figure out what style is being applied. But there we have links and those are the color options here. Going back out into this main menu and looking at layout. Uh, layout is the one that seems to have, as, as of now, since it's the newest option, the newest panel, has the least amount of settings. Um, and globally here, you can just kind of set padding. I guess this is padding, this is the outer edge padding. That didn't seem to do anything. I don't know where this is applied, actually. So if anyone does, and it's that's probably on a per theme basis too, like what it decides to use. Because all of these things that you enter into the colors and, and the type, the font, font the font families and sizes, those all get saved as design tokens or as variables. And then it gets applied to the theme and the theme just calls a variable. It doesn't call like blue, it, call, it gets called like primary color. And so whatever you assigned it, um, it's connected via the variable name. Um, so it depends on how the themes apply these things a lot of times. Um, here's where it gets sort of interesting and there's got to be some good strategies around some of this. Um, to, I keep going back and forth between like, what should you have in your theme in a version controlled environment versus what you should have in the editor, which is more globally available um and seems to be like the future uh so claire you and i will have to have a talk about that later uh but here is where you can control at a block level setting the different type layout and color uh, options so if you wanted all your paragraphs to instead of be gray you want them to be uh, blue this isn't a good example because it has some override and check it out i can't preview this because I'm only on the header or the home header. See, I'm going to save this and we're going to see our first challenge if we can open the style from a different page. So let's go to a different template. And we'll go to a, uh, we'll go to the page template that has no information. Ugh. Yeah, I couldn't right. figure out this at all. <laughs> Let's uh, add a paragraph that will be on every single page. Actually, I'm going to um, add just all of the stuff that will be on every page. Oh, crap. 
Let me go to, ah, uh, do I not have, uh, do I? I don't have HTML, sweet. Uh, I bet oh, your come paragraph. on. Sorry. No, sorry, go ahead. I was going to say, I wonder if your paragraphs on the homepage aren't changing because they're excerpts. And that's oh. like a distinct thing. So, but, the, but why would they be a different color than I didn't like change the excerpt color. So that must be coming from the theme. Yeah, this is a Okay. All right, I have all right, so I have a single post. Okay, good. I can access this. I'm still in the site editor um, because I'm in a different post template. Let me see if I change. Oh, but blocks, paragraph, colors, and the text is now. Okay, there you go. So I can preview it if I'm on a single post. I don't, this must be a, a link. Here, let me put a different color in there. Red. Why is this a paragraph? Okay. So. That doesn't make sense. Ah, this is the last like two days, Claire and I just experimenting with things and wondering what is going on. All right. So if I wanted my paragraphs to all be a super light color or a different color, this is how I would do that. Um, find that helpful in very narrow situations. For instance, if I want to create a button style that will be the primary button style for the whole site, I might go in and change the button settings. So I don't have to hire someone who knows how to do CSS. If I want a custom button style that fits my theme, um, I can just go into the site editor and find button and then go to colors. And then I can choose one of my colors here. Um, maybe I want this with that's the background color and then the foreground color. I chose a light one, so I'm gonna go dark. Um, I don't have a button on this page, so we can't preview it, but we will look in a moment. So one of the like super cool things about this full site editor is in theory, it will be a lot easier for people who don't want to get into code that much to be able to control and implement a look of a site um, without having to deal with you know, code editors and Git and also the server and anything like that. Like you can do a lot of stuff by just clicking around. Um, and I do believe it will get better and more intuitive. Um, and we're just so trained to, to looking at it in a certain way that some of the sometimes these new things just don't quite make sense. Looks like a lot of my text looks very different. Uh, this is something I couldn't get used to because again, for the past few years, I would always go to preview and I want to preview in a new window. Well, that's not really a thing. I'm look, first of all, I'm looking at a template and uh, so it's not going to open in a new window. This whole thing is supposed to be my full site editor. So I could remove that and what, uh, uh, I guess that's all I can do here. Um, so I, I would preview it just on this page, but I kept waiting for it to open a new tab and it wouldn't. Um, I find it to be a lot more clicks to get back to a page to then open it in a new tab. So I just saved, I had to bring the sidebar out. I have to go to the dashboard. I have to go to pages or I can go up here and visit site unless I wanted to find a specific page um, to preview the stuff. Do you have any buttons on here? No, oh, there's a button. There we go, pink button. So that was a very specific <laughs> narrow override to a block. Um, that makes sense. I wouldn't necessarily override the paragraph because that's kind of what you'd want to use those global settings for instead of the block settings. All right, on top here, you used to have the little customizer and now when you're in like the editor, if you have the admin bar up there, you get the edit site button um, with no drop down because there's nothing else. And again, you go right to the home page. Okay. Why couldn't I, I want to go to like the page template I was on? Is there a way to do that? If anyone knows, let me know. Um, so 
can override any of these. There are some things, um, depending on the theme, that will be available to you and some things that might not. Um, and it really just depends. Um, and when I say that, let me go to a post. Uh, so I can give you a better example. Oh, next is on dashboard, I'm gonna plus. All right. All right, so this is a sample post. I just, this is what I was trying to paste, all this HTML stuff um, that just converts into a block. Uh, if I select this block here, this paragraph block uh, in the sidebar over here, what is this called? Is it just the block settings, block panel? Do we have a name for this? It's officially the inspector settings. panel. I'll just call it the okay. right panel. All right. I feel overwhelmed when I look at this color uh, thing because I keep wanting to like, I think this is foreground and this is background because I'm not reading it and then I'll click on something and it's like, oh, that didn't actually change anything. Um, uh, you can clear if you made a mistake, but you'll have to look at the little tiny heading on top of the color swatch that is currently used. So you have your text color, your foreground color, basically your background color and your link color. However, uh, I can't for the life of me, and maybe there isn't one, see any way to edit the link state. Um, and I don't know if that's a theme thing or a WordPress thing, but I want to assign both a color for it, for it's like, hey, I'm a link. And then I want it to be a different color for the hover color, or maybe even a different color for visited, or uh, if you're, you know, focusing on it when you're a keyboard user, maybe you want to set the color for that. Uh, and I don't know if there is a way to do that. Um, I think what I've seen at least this theme do is add like an opacity to the hover state. I don't know if that's a uh, something that everyone's going to have to do, um, or if that's just here, but that's definitely an accessibility issue um, because you want to make sure if there, if the theme is automatically adding some sort of opacity, you want to make sure that even with that opacity applied, if you're hovering, it still has a high enough contrast with the, whatever color you chose as foreground color. Um, but I assume that that's one of those things that um, they're working on. And if I went to GitHub, there's like a gazillion issues. Um, and, you know, if you ever have an issue, feel free to post it on GitHub so that you bring it to their attention. Uh, so, yeah, link color. I just want states for the links. I would tell my clients to never touch this. Like there's a, a very rare case when I would want them to change the color of something. As a implementer, what I would do instead and what I would prefer to do is create whatever thing that has that color variation ahead of time and then save it as a block pattern. So if I want to have like a full width section like this one up here, I would probably copy this whole thing and then paste it into my theme and create a block pattern that they can then go up to the plus button, go to patterns, and then I would put it under like this text um, drop down. Or these are all drop downs created by the theme, whatever's available in the theme. And this theme is just a ton of block patterns. So if I wanted this dark background, I would say something like this. So then the client, if it's not yourself, there's like this whole category of like whether you're handing the site off to someone else or if this is your own site. But if I'm doing a site for somebody else, I would probably want to predefine those like color groupings so they don't have to worry about accessibility or that giant color palette in the sidebar for the most part. Then uh, they can just easily choose a block pattern and then go from there. Because usually they will have a smaller set of uh, a color palette uh, options that they would use with their brand. You wouldn't have the like 18 different colors and you'd have to make 18 variations. But uh, if it's just like a quick one-off, they're making an announcement or something, maybe you do want to leave the background and foreground color in there. But I would just try to steer them away from using this for the most part. Um, let me close that. 
Now layout <laughs> went away. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna skip layout for now. Uh, if you ever see a block that has a little plus sign as opposed to this little carrot, um, that means there's hidden options. Uh, they're not like hidden, they're just less popular options that they think you might not need to pay attention to. Um, and then you can select them to turn them on and then click again and then select and then click again and then select. <laughs> and then you can see all of the options that you have uh, for typography here. Uh, again, this is determined uh, usually by the theme, what custom settings they allow on the paragraph block within this site. Uh, again here, I wouldn't want to go too deep into changing the different styles. On my wish list, I was hoping for like some sort of class drop down or like a group of all these things, because if I know that my H3 is always going to be uppercase, always going to be bold, and always going to be a size of three. Um, there's no good way to apply that with one click. You have to do it every time you use that thing. Um, if you're doing that, unless you save it as a block pattern, or if that is the um, setting that is saved in your theme.json file. Oops. I don't know if you all saw that. Um, so I would love to have some sort of like uh, paragraph style or char character style type of situation here, like you see in like InDesign or Illustrator, you can group these styles together, but, or you can create a bunch of block patterns that, that do that. Um, I'm thinking that uh, sometimes you want like an H3 style applied to a different element. So you have a paragraph and it's not really an H3 in the document outline, but you want to stand out. Well, that's kind of when you'd want to have one of those like predefined settings. I'm rambling, um, but that's just something on my wish list that we can't do quite yet. But this is fantastic. We have more flexibility here. It used to only be size, and now you have all of these options. So that is all hiding behind the little plus sign. And then, yeah, I always open advanced to see what you can do. So you can name this, uh, you know, this is, where are we? Uh, um, above gallery. And then if I open my list view, I even my paragraphs gets a little anchor link. So that's cool that they have that on some blocks. I like that a lot. All right, do I even wanna get into the layout stuff? Uh, all right, I clicked on a group here. There is this layout option and you can inherit the default layout, which I have no idea where the default layout is created. Um, I know there was that dimensions block in the site editor, but all that had was padding. So I don't, I, I think this is defined in the theme but there's no way to change it to my knowledge, at least none that I could find in anywhere in the browser. Uh, if you find it, let me know. Uh, and you can sort of, sort of maybe sometimes override this. Um, and the only way I was able to test it is either if you make it really small or really wide. But if I would say this is 100% uh, or 100 viewport units, uh, it should span all the way across and it, it does here, uh, even my content goes out. And I think the only thing that's stopping the content from going all the way is uh, probably this hidden padding that you don't see because it doesn't predefine to what is actually being done here. But if I were to change that, now it will extend the whole way. So that's another wish list item is um, if I get the ability to change some of the stuff, and this doesn't look the way I think it's supposed to, if it can expose the, the things that are already being applied by the theme, um, that would be super awesome because then I could more easily figure out why it's not going all the way to the edge, for instance. Now, if I hit inherit default layout, it should, the content should squeeze to the column. I'm doing this, um, you can't really see. It should um, be the same width as the rest of this text column, but I think the background sh should stay wide. So that's great because um, this full width option, 
uh, is how you break out of that like restricted column, but not every block has the full width option. Uh, group does, uh, I, I think uh, you could probably add that option within your child theme or your theme, um, but by default, there's only a handful of blocks that have that full width option. It's super helpful if you have something with background color. So I'm gonna save this even though I don't think I've made any changes. Really, we just kind of talk through things. This table, These tables have full width, unless it's the column or something. All right, let me go through here. Uh, this one really was confusing. If you're starting a new site, if you're like experimenting, make sure you have content in there first, because if you're working with like the query loop plugin and you're wondering why it's not working, it might be because you don't have any posts um, or at least not enough to see what's going on. So this is uh, the automatic homepage, not like a page I made myself. So I'm just working with the template here. I was trying to do something earlier. Okay, it finally stuck because I was trying to change the max width of my post to be 78 rems wide. And now it says it, but earlier I could not get that to be uh, 78 width wide, 78 rems wide, but it looks like it's working now. Okay, so um, I uh, just a general tip here. It's not really anything new. Was the is the row block new too? Row block is new, I believe. Yeah, I didn't see them advertising that, but row is new, um, and it it's sort of what I would normally use group or section for. I think it has different default styles than group. Um, but it will take that content all the way to the edge if you're trying to do um, like a full width background color and then something else that is restricted to the, the you know, you don't want your text to be too wide because it's not readable. Um, so I highly so, recommend recommend using those types of blocks. So it has like, a, it's like full width, but there's like internal margins for whatever it contains. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. That's um, and we've, Claire and I have used the ultimate add-on for Gutenberg um, specifically. Well, one thing I use all the time is the section block. And I love the section block because you can change what kind of um, HTML element it is, but you can do that here on row too. So that's great. So I can change, if I, if I wanted to make a header, I can actually make it header and it can be semantic. It's not just a div everywhere. So that's nice um, as an option here. The thing that, <laughs> it it doesn't really have um, well more like columns. Uh, you can you can choose to stack the columns on mobile, um, but you don't get like fine grain control. Like sometimes on a theme, I like it to be three or four columns when it's at its widest point, and then once you get a little smaller, that four columns breaks down to two columns, so like in between sizes, and then of course it's one column when you're on the smallest screen size. But here it's it's kind of all or nothing. I, I mean, at least they let us stack it on mobile. But I, I have a feeling the the page builder plugins or the page builder themes will stick around for that reason uh, alone is to control the when the layout needs to shift to make sense for that device width. Um, but I do believe they're working on it. It's just this is where we are now. Uh, they have some controls for like the navigation. Claire showed that you can do the mobile menu um, and you have a few options for that. But right now it's kind of limited um, in, in that way. Uh, so before we made themes, we would always, uh, well, not always. If you made a custom theme, you made a custom theme that was fine. Another way to do it was to choose a, an existing theme or a premium theme and then build a child theme off of it. Now with this block theme business, um, I, I don't know how necessary a child theme will be anymore. I'm super open to having that discussion. Um, 
I don't know how often these themes will be updated because uh, I can show you what 2022 looks like. Uh, and one of the super great things about these new block themes is you don't hardly have to know any uh, code to write it. I don't want to say that. I mean, there is some uh, like syntax that you have to understand, uh, especially for this theme JS fi file. This is like the bread and butter of the theme, which I'm going to talk about in a little bit. Um, but before we would have all these PHP templates, um, and I'll make this bigger. Um, now all of our templates are HTML files. So if you look at what a page is, uh, it's it's the same type of like angled bracket comments that you would see on a WordPress post or page, but this is just in a straight up HTML file. And what I think it looks for this like block group um, type of definition here. And then it, it, you tell it, you know, in these little uh, comments here, the same with uh, what you would do when you make a page, it kind of gives it a little bit of direction. So when you saw some of the like weird padding and whatnot, um, it's coming from these inline comments within this HTML file. And I might not always have an option to override those in the browser. So that's one thing to know when you're making a theme or when you're editing someone else's theme. If you can't figure out where something's coming, it might be coming from, it's coming from inside the house. It's in the actual theme. Um, so if we look through some of these pages, uh, like this page, no separators, it's a main div and that's it. And then I assume it closes the div over here. Uh, and that's, that's all, there's no like loop to deal with anymore. It's just pretty straightforward. Even if you take an existing theme and just kind of take out all the stuff you don't need, I still don't know if you need that child theme because I don't know how often this would get updated and everything is being saved as variables. Uh, so instead of padding, you know, 32 pixels, it's padding this variable name, custom spacing, which you decide what you want that custom spacing to be in that theme.js file, which I'll show you in a second. So that's all of our like partials, our template parcels there for the page templates. Um, functions file is entirely dealing with style sheets, it looks like. Uh, so you, you know, you register, you add your theme support for the block styles. And this will import your editor styles so you can style what the front end or what the, the admin, what do we call that now? Because it's not really a back end anymore. What it looks like when you're editing the site, which it should look like you know, what you're doing on the front. Um, actually, that looks like it's just pulling in the front style sheet. Uh, and then we go down here and this just gets you a version so that it doesn't get cached in case you want to version out your CSS. Not super uh, necessary for everyone to do, but it's really helpful if you get cache styles. Uh, this is uh, enqueuing those font families, uh, which is done also down here. This is editor style. This is including the font families and the block library styles blah, blah, blah. You don't even have to know what all of this is, but I just wanted to walk through. Here is where they called the font face rules for that um, custom typeface. It's open source here. So you can use this if you'd like to as well using the source Serif Pro. I think you can get that on Google uh, fonts library. And then you would uh, do the link to the path here. And that's where it's getting that drop down. It's the only font file or the only font family you saw in the drop down. So they're enqueuing it in the functions file. And that's really it. And then this is the magic. It requires uh, the block patterns, which are all saved in this ink block patterns uh, folder here. So we have this ink, this block patterns is going to be a long list. Uh, here's the categories in that little drop down when we had this little here and you open up the patterns, all of these categories, some of them are default WordPress and some of them are custom categories. Um, so like text was default, probably, I, I can't remember what they all are, but here are the theme specific ones that they wanted to add. 
Uh, and then we scroll down a little bit more and all of the files in this patterns folder are really just broken down into each one of these is a separate file. And each one of these is created by just uh, making that block on a page, going to copy and you can paste it into almost a plain HTML file, but it's save it as PHP. It, you have this for every single um, block pattern. And the only thing that changes is the title here. Uh, you can choose the category here and then you would name it. This is like your slug, like the little URL to the black pattern. Um, and then the content, you, you take your cursor, put it in between the little two, um, actually right there, and you paste what you made in the editor. So you don't have to deal with any of that. You just make it in the browser. You don't have to know what's going on behind the scenes. And then you go and paste it here. And that is a new pattern that your client can use anywhere on the site. If they wanted like a dark background, this is how I would recommend you do it. You make a pattern then they can easily choose it when they're going to edit the site. Uh, 2022 has a ton of patterns. Um, and I think uh, it really helps get the point across. There. Parts. Yeah, it's, it's like it's a different a um, a part in a template. No, oh, it's a different oh. sort of a paradigm of what a theme is. Yes, everything is like shifting your mental model a little bit. And I think that's why I like my brain is exploding in the past two days. Cause while some of the stuff I like know uh, is for the better, it's just hard to wrap my brain around doing it a different way. Uh, Temp oh, these parts here, those are the things that aren't the actual full page. So these are the things that would be saved as a template part, probably also if you're doing a custom template part um, in that site editor, uh, which header and footer would be one of those and the variations of. So yeah, I mean, it's, 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 a, it's a different world. Uh, I think it will be easier it's a different way of thinking and planning for your site. And I think there's gonna be this like huge, uh, if you're doing a site for somebody else, like how do we think about setting this up so that, um, for instance, if they go and start adding different color headings on pages or whatnot, and then someone goes to the site editor and changes all of them to black, well, whatever you did on that page, is going to be um, the most specific change and it's gonna stay there. So you're overriding anything that you'd maybe wanna change globally by changing those things at the block level on the poster page. So that's why like, as someone who uh, subscribes to the don't repeat yourself and like do changes in CSS, cause it's a global change. Like some of these settings on the side sort of terrify me as a designer. Um, but I know as like someone who wants to design their own page and get it done and doesn't want to do any code, then that opportunity is exciting. Uh, it's just maybe not as easily changeable in the future. And maybe that's okay. I don't know. That's pretty crazy. Let's, let's, <laughs> let's talk oh, about- I the theme, Jason, but... mm. We might have to get into all this like, crazy stuff in a in another session because there's just yeah a lot too much to go over um but bimal had a really good question which was how does this how does this affect my site like how does this should i upgrade to 5.9 there's all this scary stuff that you just mm -hmm. showed us yeah and and i was like the stuff i was showing was not simple um is it worth updating to 5.9 what happens yeah locally um, or on a dev site update to 5.9 well, I think the thing, one of the things to keep in mind is that all of this is optional. Like if you put 5.9 on your site and just ignore any block you don't recognize and ignore any settings that you don't recognize, you don't have to worry about them at all because all the basic stuff on your site that you already built is still there. Um, and WordPress is really good about being backwards compatible. So every major plugin will be tested with this version. 
and Divi, Elementor, all those big page builders are tested with this version too. So as long as they, you know, you, you look at the repository and, and you check, is it tested with 5.9, it should be okay. You can be confident that it's not gonna break and it's not gonna have a bizarre change in its behavior. Um, so I think, and I've upgraded a few sites already and I haven't seen myself any difference in my day-to-day -day operation of the site from WordPress 5.9. Um, it's also important to keep in mind that you don't want to fall behind because 5.9.1 might come out tomorrow and that would be a security release. And you absolutely don't want to be in a position where a security release cannot be applied to your site. So you do kind of want to um, try to keep up because if there's a security release, I've had last time there was a security release, uh, one of my client's sites was hacked like the next day with that very thing that had been in the security release. So you do want to kind of keep up. And I think for this, for this release, which is, I mean, frankly, for me, at my, I make my um, livelihood as WordPress. This release is a little disappointing and threatening to me because there's so much stuff here that I just can't deal with and stuff that is too much for me to put in my sites and use um, easily. Like some, like I like the list view, but a lot of the rest of it is just too much. And, um, but I am still gonna update all my sites because uh, I can ignore the parts that aren't too much. The rest of it is still there. The rest of it still works. And, um, you know, I can just like gradually ease myself into learning about all this new stuff over the course of the next year while still keeping my site up to date with all the core security and functionality updates. That's, yeah. It's not much of a change if you're using an existing theme. Not, yeah. The big change happens when you decide you wanna go to a block theme. That's when everything gets pretty wild. But even like with the menu, like you saw Claire's screen, it's the classic menu. There's, in this full site editor, there's no, you just added the menu in the in place. Um, and so I think, yeah, uh, if you're updating, for the most part, the only site that I know of that broke is one that I had a themed at JSON file for already. And I was doing some things that were sort of beta. And uh, that's that's the only reason that, and it didn't even break. It just yeah, yeah, smaller broke. type size <laughs> on the, in the editor. So it, it might slightly confuse an editor who edits a particular page. Is, yeah, it's not. It wasn't broken. Um, I, I had one site that broke pretty badly, but it was oh, also no. an e-commerce site. Had a lot of other stuff on it. You know, it's like you never know which pieces aren't going to play nicely together. I recovered it pretty quickly. It wasn't like irrevocably broke. Irrevocably broke. I had it back up in half an hour. So that's good. Do you mind saying what um, theme and, and plugin? What e-commerce you're using? In e-commerce, I was using the uh, storefront theme. So the, the WooCommerce theme. Yeah, that's a great uh, theme. It was, it was the one that um, I used. I talked about the uh, barn tables um, plugin a couple of months ago. The one from Barn2 that makes uh, uh, tables and stuff for a, okay. like a catalog page, basically. Right. And uh, so that was there. It had Beaver Builder on it. It's hard to say which thing broke, but it broke. And I, I had a backup. I recovered it. It was fine. <laughs> okay, good. Are you running so, five, it's, eight? It's, it's kind of like, you know, all this stuff with the new block editor and stuff. If you've been using a page builder, um, the same kind of thing. There's all kinds of stuff in it you may never use. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's, yeah, and it, it is kind of a shift in um, thinking about how you're going to do it. My question is, is I have to, if I have an existing site and I have CSS in the in the customizer, where did that go? It stays That's a there. Good question. It stays yeah, it's the there. Customizer. Just where? <laughs> it's still you still have a customizer until the moment you decide to go full block only theme. Okay. You will still have the customizer, right, Claire? Like, there's a customizer on the site that we just updated to five point nine. Oh, oh yeah, but if you switch the theme, it would disappear. So where does it go yeah. then? I mean, it's still saved in the database somewhere, but can you ever get it back out again? Yeah, it exists, uh, but where is I it? I bet if you uh, re reactivate, you well, I mean, this there. is where this is where the hybrid themes come in because um, yeah. that's exactly what the hybrid and universal themes are—is a compromise between the two. So um, we might. I mean, that would probably be a good subject for next month is, is like, what, what if you do both? Why not both? Mm -hmm. um, 
there's a it's um, basically like a you leave a few lines of code, you know, the, like a chunk that you copy and paste into your site, and then that gives you access to both the old customizer and the new site editor. There's also a customizer plugin, I think, kind of like the Gutenberg or Classic Editor plugin or whatever, yeah. if you don't want it to go away completely. Uh, a lot of times, the only reason I have it in the customizer is because that loads last. So I need it to override it's, yes, something it, else that override somebody else unique. did and I can't find yep. it. And so <laughs> I Frankenstein <laughs> that together. <laughs> mm -hmm. Totally valid. Yeah. <laughs> You know, it's not in the budget for me to rewrite this. Sorry. <laughs> it's, yeah. it's not in the budget for me to figure out how you configured your SAS or whatever. Yeah, <laughs> yep. exactly. And I'm not rerunning out your SAS either. either. <laughs> well, Stacy, the tool you're using, uh, the visual, uh, visual Studio Code, is that what? Uh, what oh, yeah. Uh, for my editor, yeah, VS Code. It looks, rather, it looks like a good way. Is, is it all local? Is your code all local or is it um, interfacing with the host? Yeah, no, that's just my local uh, text editor that I use to. It's, it's right. You are fluidly moving among all of the files. So I, I'm just kind of curious how that is set up. Uh, we can do a local development uh, meetup. In the spring, Visual. it's fast if you do local development. <laughs> Topics for future meetups. Also, if anybody else has any ideas for future meetups, uh, happy to take them into consideration. Or if anyone wants to volunteer to present, uh, <laughs> so you don't have to deal with my rambling. Claire, you did great. Oh, thanks. This is this is this subject is just. We chose this in a sort of a lighthearted, like, how hard could it be <laughs> Wait, to give our intro to WordPress 5.9? And then we're like, oh, this is terrible. It's not um, terrible. I just wanted it to be clear. It's super awesome. Not intuitive for me and Claire yet, at least. Intuitive. No, it's not intuitive at all. I think it's a more difficult adjustment than blocks, but it is an adjustment that you don't need to make um, at all until whatever future point you find yourself with a site that uses this stuff. Yeah, yeah it's it's a choice you can opt out of. Um, I'm gonna have somebody to five point nine. Sorry. I never somebody present something that wasn't totally familiar to them, and somebody who just was so polished and just flew right through it. Like how in the world you can't be human if you're. <laughs> It's just, I get all my swearing and punching the screen out ahead of time. It was, yeah, it was grim. Oh, and as you demonstrated, you can get to the code if you need to. To, to figure something out i mean you can't you can get there yeah. you might have to hire a friend to do it but you can, it can be done <laughs> yeah yeah this i mean this one i gotta say it's been a while since i ran into something that confused me as much right out of the box as, as this recent update though yeah. it's um it's not obvious from just i would just click around and find things on yeah. this right now I actually did just yeah, build a site. They we were they were moving from an old WordPress site to a new WordPress site, and we used kind of a hybrid. Of, uh, what, well, we used uh, Astra with the free versions of the page builders of Beaver Builder, and so they had uh, weekly posts on there that they would do. And so now, of course, that was in the block editor. So I, I said to myself, the classic editor is going away. I need to just train them now. Since we're having a whole new site anyway, I need to train them now to use the block editor. And but it's got that what do they call the legacy block or classic, classic something classic. like that classic because yeah. it, it looks like the classic editor. I said, okay, here's what you're gonna do. Their pro their posts where it, it was the church, so they had the weekly posts that are just identical with detail changes. I said, just copy last week and change the details. That's all you gotta do. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> we're we're going to move you slowly because you know they're, they're all volunteers they're not technical so you get, you have to think about your clients too and what they're doing. I found blocks so intuitive like moving from classic editor to blocks you just hit enter and hey you got a paragraph you don't really yeah. need to know it's a block but cool look at this I can actually drag and drop the paragraph instead of copying yeah. and pasting it somewhere I found that transition to be 
a lot more smooth than I'm currently finding this new transition, which hopefully is temporary. Um, I hope we get a release later this year that cleans up a lot of this stuff because it's, um, it's, it's this, no. right. It kind of feels like it's in about the seventh grade right now. <laughs> you know? It's an awkward thing. It's kind of awkward and figuring stuff out. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Like I'm trying to think when I would be comfortable making a block only theme for a client. And the answer is not yet. Um, would I, I would maybe do one for myself just to be, just to experiment and learn more. But, um, and I can't tell sometimes what, is in like a bug that I'm experiencing or like a user error because I'm not clicking in the right place or like I swear I don't know where that white background here where did this white background come from and okay, I gotta share my screen and how do I get rid of it like I I have no idea it's it's I want, I want the, it to move towards less complexity and it's not, it's moving towards a lot more complexity, at least in like the, the user interface, like maybe conceptually it's simpler. And I think they're conceptually making it simpler, but the interface to that concept is, is becoming more complex. You're looking for that block to not have the background. I am trying to figure out where that white background is coming from. So this you try group, to inspect her on the front end. Oh, there's no front end. Here's <laughs> cool. Here. So in the editor. This is all font style. And uh here, if I type in background color. Oh, that's just that's grayed out. So it's it's coming from somewhere else. It, it's a preset somewhere. It's not on the it's not on the headline. Uh, it would be on the block. No. I think I'm on the wrong. It's it would. That's not the right. Mindful. All right, it would be on this block. Okay, oh, here we go. Does every block group, every group block have a background color of white? All right, let's go look. I was gonna say, All if right. you go up to the group, Oops. you're on heading right now, go to group. It's not um, on the page, I don't think. So if I look at background color here, nothing is selected. Oh, yeah. Right. Yeah. If I go to element, ooh, not elements. Uh, header dark block. This is part of header dark large group. So. This is on the template header. This is the. Is that oh, part? I see. Got it. Template part. Yeah. No. Yeah. Template part. Mm -hmm. It's a new thing. Header dark large. In the well, this is the site editor though. There it is. There it is. Yeah. Here on the background of a group block. See, I set a group block. I didn't set the group block, but I must have set the group block. So save it. I can't preview it. This is supposed to be my preview. Oh, it yeah. didn't change. I just uh, a real quick want to announce it. it's it's after nine, eight o'clock so there's no shame in after anyone needs to duck out <laughs> it's, it's you know, yeah. officially over we're just going to do some group discussion or troubleshooting or whatever now so thanks everyone for coming um i'm going to stop recording now actually too um we'll uh, be posting the link to the um video and every note we have all the notes we have on the meetup page as soon as everything's processed and ready so thanks everyone for attending tonight ending recording now Oh, Stacy, that's you. You're the host. Okay.